Hey, welcome back to Tony's Picks.com. Here, joined by Collins Brown. Time for our four games here. Baseball season has arrived, Collins. I can't wait either. I honestly, and we talked about it a little bit, but I feel like tomorrow's the first day of school and I'm a, like a little first grade girl or something. About to go to the first day of school. That's kind of how I feel right now. Yeah, it's really exciting. Of course, uh, Collins, a former big time collegiate uh, catcher in, in, in college, and of course, he knows baseball inside and out. As a catcher, you have to, right? It's, it's almost, you're almost like the second manager on the team. Yeah, and I, I was talking to, actually, I was talking to my old college baseball coach last week, and I was like, at times, I kind of felt like I was the pitching coach. And he was like, I think everybody felt that way, buddy. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, you're right. The catcher's the. The next man up, if somebody, if you need somebody on the field, then uh, uh, you're who they come to ask. Yeah, no doubt about that. Always the smartest guy on the team. <laughs> Always so much you got to know. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> With baseball knowledge, probably. But yes. Smartest, definitely not. Uh, of course, yeah, yeah. That's the way they call it. What, what's the what, what's the uh, the term they call for a catcher? Tools of what? What was it? That, there's a saying tools about. Tools of ignorance. There you go. <laughs> There you go. The tools of ignorance. Oh, brother. All right, uh, let's get this one under opening day. Let's get it underway here with Collins Brown. All right, here we go. Uh, we've got the Braves at the Nationals here. The Braves heavy here, laying 250. The total is not 137. Total, I think uh, we'll see what the total here in this game is. Uh, what do we got here? Total is eight runs. So for this one, uh, it's it's very similar to how I looked at it last year. Corbin and uh, – in the first inning last year, really struggled. Set around like a six, six or seven ERA, high sixes, low sevens. Um, in 15 games on the road last year, Corbin was two and 11 in 15 games with a seven, seven five ERA uh, and a 1.92 WHIP. He averaged about four and a third on the road. In five games in April last year, 19.2 um, innings pitched. It's about three and two thirds innings per start in April with an 869 ERA and a two whip. So Corbin struggled on the road last year. He struggled in April and he struggled in the first inning. The Braves hit really well in the first inning last year. They've seen Corbin a lot. This lineup hasn't really changed that much. They've seen Corbin a lot. The one thing that would worry me is they will have a platoon advantage on Matt Olson, uh, one of the bigger bats in uh, the, the first four hitters in the inning. But Matt Olson hits lefties really well. So I'm not too concerned about that. The Braves, like I said, are a righty heavy lineup with Olson, Michael Harris, and um, Ozzy as a switch hitter. Those are going to be the two lefties you see tomorrow and the switch hitter and Ozzy. I like the Braves to score in the first inning in this game. I think they, I think they absolutely tear the cover off the baseball against Corbin and probably get him out in three innings. There you go. Collins here in this one uh, is going to going to take out the Braves Nationals. Yes, runs yes run first innings. That's a plus one hundred. He also likes the Braves to score first inning plus one eighty five. And you know, I would look. I was looking here at Corbin. I couldn't believe that he was opening a starter for the Nationals. I mean, I'm just like blowing well, my hair. How can how can this be? Uh, my goodness, he was he was actually rated the worst. Uh, boy, the uh, the Nationals had the 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 uh, I think it was Fangars, one of the one of the analytics outfit uh, out there uh, had Corbin as one of the worst starting pitchers of all of baseball last year to start the season. Here we go again with Corbin again another bad year after posting near a six ERA in twenty twenty one. He comes back in twenty twenty two another ERA over six. Uh, just uh, fascinating uh, how, how he remains here in this Nationals uh, rotation. Yeah, but I, I think that tells you more about how bad off the Nationals are right now just as an organization. They're, they had two really key pieces in their offense last year, and they used both of those guys as capital. So yeah, I, I don't see this team being very effective this year. Uh, if you want to go, if you want to go deeper into the rabbit hole, you can take the Nationals under 60 and a half games, I think is their win total. Um, but I'd stay as far away from the Nationals all year as I could. Yeah, no doubt about that. All right, Collins here. Take Braves, Nationals. Yes, run first inning. That's plus 100. Braves to score first inning plus 185. Uh, this one will have a start time here of 1 p.m. each time. This will be one of the games aired on MLB Network. Guys, check out Collins Brown over at TonySpace.com. Strong NBA season this year. Click the link in the description. Get signed up to his long-term passes. Promo code TonyT at checkout, and you'll save 20% off. All right, let's continue on with our four-pack here with Collins. As we continue on here, we are going to look at this one here between the Red Sox and Orioles here, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Red Sox, $1.25, total of nine. 
Yeah, kind of shocked to see the Red Sox open up as the favorite here. Um, I, I kind of, I guess I get it. Uh, they're starting Kluber, which Kluber's been really good his whole career. Uh, he is a pitch to contact guy, and that worries me against a really. This Orioles lineup is really young. They're really athletic, and they're going to be fired up to play this game. So if you make them hit, they were. I think they're going to hit. Um, Gibson did struggle a touch last year. He finished with a 5.05 ERA and a 1.34 WHIP. The WHIP is kind of concerning for it to be over a one, but you think of Kluber as a strike thrower, right? As a 1-2-1 WHIP last year, that scares me a lot because, as I mentioned, this Orioles lineup is very young and they're very talented. If you throw strikes, they are going to swing the bat. I think this game comes down to the Orioles lineup being a little bit more effective than the Red Sox lineup early. I really worry about this Red Sox lineup throughout throughout this season. They do have two pretty good bats in Adam Duvall and Justin Turner, but they're both right-handed guys. So I I don't really I don't really like this Red Sox spot. I definitely don't want to lay any money. Um, I'm going to give you the value here, and the, that's the Orioles money line. Just just as as flat as you can play it. The value is on the Orioles money line. The young, talented team. The better arm, in my opinion, in this game is Kyle Gibson. I don't think the Red Sox are going are built to hit early in the season, so I'm going to give the Orioles the nod in this game. All right, Collins here, and Orioles up plus 105 here against the Red Sox, and of course, uh, you know we have some a World Baseball Classic player in here, and Verdugo in here in this game. Uh, what are your thoughts here? How some of these players who played already in these type of uh, heated competitions, uh, how how, will, how how you look to them to fare here? Here in, in in opening day April, and also to some of the cold weather. Right, we're looking at thirty. We're looking at clear skies, but thirty four degree weather, winds left to right, fourteen miles per hour. Yeah, so the winds blowing left to right bothers me for Red Sox or for for the or sorry, it bothers me for the right handed hitters. It's going to be hard to get it over the green monster. For the left handed hitters, wrap it around the foul pole. It'll be the easiest home run you had all season. Um, the cold weather, ball's not going to fly. Older arms are going to take longer to get keep to get warm and stay warm. So don't expect to see uh, Gibson or Kluber go any deeper than five innings unless they're at the minimum, which would be probably 60 pitches here uh, for five innings of play. Um, as far as Verdugo is concerned, having played in the World Baseball Classic and some of the guys who we're going to see play opening day tomorrow having played in the World Baseball Classic, it's going to be a change. It's going to be a change of pace. You just went from playing for your country in a very amped up, high anxiety, high anxiety environment to opening day baseball. Now, it's a big deal, but the game doesn't matter, if that makes sense. The game doesn't really matter. It's the first game of a 162-game season. Everybody's going to be keyed up to play, but ultimately it's not going to be that same environment. So I do think there's going to be that adjustment period. It's almost like going from playing travel ball to school ball, right? Uh, travel ball, you don't have that – you don't – you don't have to. You don't have the pressure to play. You just have. You don't have to win. You just have to play good. School ball. You got to win. So, um, I think it's just going to be a different atmosphere, a different anxiety, a, a different pressure, uh, so to say. Not necessarily anxiety. So, uh, it's going to be interesting for sure to see these guys and how they perform coming off. Huh? It's been what a week and a half. Yeah, it's been a week and a half here. So, uh, Collins here, Orioles plus 105 here against the Red Sox. This one will have a start time, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Guys, click the links in the description. Get signed up for Collins. It's one month all sports pass. Get all his premium plays for 30 days. All baseball for 30 days. You got NBA in there where he's been on absolute fire in the NBA this year. You can see the numbers. The numbers have been outstanding for Collins. Uh, uh, posting a 841 units of problem. You get to the NBA playoffs there in that 30-day pass as well as his baseball, NHL, and, of course, college basketball. As college basketball starts to wind down. So go ahead and get signed up with Collins Brown over at Tony. Don't forget that promo code Tony T checkout and you'll save 20% off. All right, let's continue on here on the show with Collins Brown. All right, Collins, we go to pick three of our four pack today and uh, uh, we'll, be, we'll be looking here at this one here today as uh, we've got, um, yep, let's see, we had our odds screen here. Let's see what we have. We'll probably go here and, and do it this way then. So let's go ahead and pull the game up here for you guys. Here we're going here. Uh, this one will be between the Phillies and Rangers here with the Rangers here laying a dollar thirty-five total is going to come in here on this one. Uh, let's see what we got here on the Phillies game. Phillies and the Rangers were coming in at six and a half. Yeah, so the whole reason you're getting the Rangers as a favorite here, the whole reason you're getting over under six and a half, is because of the starting pitcher for the Rangers. I think everybody knows that. 
Uh, Jacob DeGrom is one of the best arms in baseball, and there is no arguing that. But can he stay healthy? That's not really a factor in this game. I think he stays healthy for the game. So what we're looking at, lineup, who's got the better lineup, and who in this situation can perform higher, NOLA or DeGrom? I lean towards NOLA. I think NOLA, I think one of the two arms for the Phillies this year are going to be in the NL Cy Young race, whether that be NOLA or Wheeler. I think one of the two is going to be in the race. The lineup for the Phillies team and the coaching staff have had the opportunity to play and hit against DeGrom. That's only going to help them. They've seen him. They know his stuff. They know how to beat him. And I think they I think they put together a really good game here against DeGrom. I expect a very low scoring game. The Rangers really couldn't hit last year. They struggled. They're young though, but Nola is that guy early in the season who is going to be far better than hitting is. DeGrom the same way, but the Phillies, as I mentioned, they've seen him in the past and they've hit him in the past. What is going to hurt the Phillies is obviously not having Reese Hoskins and Bryce Harper. But they still have a really good lineup outside of those guys. I like the Phillies here. I think they can – the only reason I'm giving that out is because I think Nola is good enough to quiet the Rangers down. If the Rangers have to go to the bullpen in the sixth or seventh inning, their bullpen is not good enough against this Phillies lineup. I think you take – Oh, I'm, I don't. I don't think. I know you take the Phillies in the full nine here. There is no value on the Rangers. If you want to look at a first five, I completely understand looking at the Rangers. But for the full game, you know Degrom can't go nine innings. That bullpen is not good. Do not lay any juice in a full game with the Rangers early in the season, especially with the bullpen they have. All right, we got Collins here on uh, in this one here. Uh, looking at the Phillies here uh, at plus 115 behind Aaron Nola. And, of course, they are there missed a couple of players. And, of course, the Texas uh, – we'll be in a new stadium here playing in a dome. Yeah. That that stadium last year – and that might have been the, the Rangers hitting struggles, but nothing in that, in that dome carried at all last year. I mean, it was just pitiful. The ball didn't never carried in Arlington anyways, and then you put them indoors, and it's just – the ball doesn't fly. But that it plays to both of these pitchers' strengths, right? You think about DeGrom being a high strikeout guy, fills up the zone. Aaron Nola, high strikeout guy, fills up the zone. They're going to live up in the zone because they have the high velocity, high spin rate. I think, I think in this game, like I said, I, I give Nola the advantage. As crazy as it sounds, I just think this Phillies lineup, since they've seen DeGrom, they can put some things together and put him out of the game in the sixth inning. And if that's the case, the Rangers don't have the bullpen to stay in this game. The Phillies have one of the best bullpens in Major League Baseball. So if it turns into that bullpen game in a tie ball game, you give the nod to the Phillies, and I think Vegas does the same thing live. All right, Collins here, Phillies plus 115 here against the Rangers. Uh, this one will have a start time here of 7.30 Eastern time. All right, uh, we'll get continue on here uh, with Collins Brown here as uh, we are continuing here with our four-pack here. This is day game at 1 p.m. Eastern time. All right, Collins, what you got for us next coming up here as uh, we continue on. Before we get the reminder, if you're looking for Collins' best bets, guys, just click the link in the description, get over to his page, get signed up for his best bets today. Promo code Tony T at checkout will save you 20% off. we got one-day passes, individual best bets, long-term passes, Passes three, seven, or third day all sports pass. So get signed up with Collins Brown. All right, let's continue on here on the show. Uh, next, Collins, you got a season win total for us. I, I actually have a division winner. Division winner, division winner. That's right. No, no. Right, so we're looking at the AL Central. The three team, this is, this is the second tightest division in Major League Baseball this year. Obviously, the tightest division is the NL East with the Braves, Mets, and Phillies. This is the second tightest in my mind. So at the top, you've got, in no particular order, you've got the Guardians who won it last year, the White Sox, and the Twins. The Twins added a lot of pieces to a troublesome starting rotation last year. They added Kenta Maeda. They added Pablo Lopez. They still have Sonny Gray. They still have Tyler Molly. And I'm blanking on the other one that – we got Sunny, Joe Sunny, Ryan. Sunny Sorry. Gray, Sunny Gray, Joe Ryan, and uh, on the IR uh, injured list will be Chris Paddock. Okay, so 
even even that, if they get Paddock back, that's six really good starters. I think you see maybe Maeda move to the bullpen. It's going to be interesting to see how they shake that up. But the offense is going to run through Byron Buxton. If Byron Buxton can stay healthy, this is a dangerous team. They have Carlos Correa. They added uh, Joey Gallo, Max Kepler they have. They have really good pieces in this lineup. Jorge Polanco is going to anchor the middle infield. This is a really good team. I do see, I do see the White Sox struggling again this year. I think they've fallen back down to earth. The Guardians, I don't think this lineup is going to do the same thing they did last year. I just don't see it happen. I think it was almost a fluke the way they played last year. They won games in just weird situations where they could just – Poke, they could choke and poke and put a ball in the gap and win a game in extra innings. I like this Twins team. It's They're going to go as far as Byron Buxton can take them, but as far as the division's concerned, the value, the value is on the Twins. The Twins to win the division at plus 150 is, that to me is like, is almost gold. I love that. All right, Collins here on the Twins that win the division here, plus 150. Remember, the Twins was one of the, one of those high-scoring teams you sell on the top of the leaderboards last year in hitting, but it was the pitching that was terrible last year. Pablo Lopez in there, Joe Ryan, Gray, Male, who I really liked last year at the trading deadline. I thought Molly was some guy that who was really pitching well and uh, was one of those under-the-radar guys, and I like the fact that Minnesota picked them up, but I think it does add strength to them. Paddock is a guy that can help them. Also, it's the bullpen's going to have to help because the bullpen was a sieve at times last year. But again, uh, when you look at Cleveland, uh, remember, Cleveland dominated the division last year. If you go back and look at divisional records, they just beat up the AL Central last year. And I think that the Twins have the possibility of doing that too. And of course, uh, recently we just saw their, 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 uh, their ace uh, for, the, for the Guardians going to be missed the first two months of the season. Yeah, and that's only going to help this Twins lineup that can absolutely hammer pitching, like you said. The Guardians did really well in the division, outside of the division. They played about as well as you think they would. So when you add the rotate, you put the rotation together for the Twins, which was really the only big piece to your team last year that was killing you, was you, when you turned it over to the bullpen, you were already down four runs. You can't. That's not sustainable baseball. I tell I tell people all the time. You need to play towards the controllable variables. The Twins last year played towards the uncontrollable. They played themselves into situations that were uncontrollable. This team is very good, though. I, 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 Byron Buxton, as I've mentioned, I think he's a, he's a long shot at AL MVP at plus 4,000, but I think you take a dime on it because he's that good of a player. He's genuinely a – I'm not going to say a Mike Trout caliber player – but he's very he's very similar to a Ronald Acuna. He can he can he's got speed. He can glove it in center. He can hit for power and he hits for contact. If he can stay healthy, which is why I think this Twins team struggled last year because he was hurt. If he can stay healthy, he can ride the ship with this team and they can go a very long way in October baseball. Yeah, for the guys, it's debatable. I don't. I wouldn't say he's the the, the ace. Probably number two guy behind Bieber would be Tristan McKenzie, the young the youngster there. Tristan McKenzie kind of grew up there mm -hmm. with his team. Had that uh, two years ago, came in as a rookie. Highly touted, had a tough start. They sent him down. When he came back, he was a different guy. And it was McKenzie who really pitched well down the stretch for the Guardians last year. Yeah, I, I loved betting on McKenzie his first year. I loved betting on him last year. I just don't know if this Guardians lineup can continue on that stretch they continued on last year. And you know this as, as well as anybody, Tony. Baseball's all about the hot hand. Yeah. If you got the hot hand, you stay hot. When you cool off, the young kids are the ones that can't ride the ship because they never had to. That's what I'm looking at with this Guardians team. They never had that real fall off last year. If they have that fall off, can they ride the ship because they are so young? Yeah, it's uh, still Bieber, Quantrill, Savali, Plesak, and it looks like Hunter Gaddis will be the guy because Morrison, uh, McKenzie, are and you know those 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 teams that win those one one run decisions. Uh, sometimes it comes back the other way. It, it's, and we saw that with the Giants. The Giants had that one year where they're winning these games two one, three two, and uh, and, and, and we, we saw what happened them over the past couple of seasons. Yeah. Um, Interestingly, interestingly enough, I was actually thinking about the Diamondbacks and Giants in the NL West today. Uh, if you look at the odds, of, as far from my book, I had the Diamond Books at plus 2,200 and the Giants at plus 1,600. You're only getting a 600 point differential. Usually you're seeing 2,000 points between the Giants and Diamondbacks. 
I think a lot of people are thinking the Diamondbacks can be third in that division. Maybe, maybe they can play themselves into a wild card. And that it sounds crazy, but they're a really good team. Yeah, D-backs will be a team to keep an eye on. Of course, to the Dodgers, uh, we see a big fall off. I think their season win total was 91. They were in the hundreds last year, so there's a bit, lot of turnover with that team. Not a lot of signings uh, because they're kind of going with the youngsters. Uh, of course, the word out here is they're trying to put together a deal for Otani next year. And Otani's already, already, I think he's he's already talked about, look, wanted to you know play the market to see what the market will offer him. Uh, we'll see how the Angels, what they do this season. But I think the word out here is that the Otani and the Dodgers will put together a package to try to get to uh, Otani. Also, you're interested to know Urias on a contract here. Uh, we'll see how this all r runs out. But again, that starting lineup is good. They added J.D. Martinez to that lineup, but they did lose some fo folks there. And they lost they lost Trey Turner, and they lose a, a Gordon Lux to injury. So we'll see how they, they roll up there. But anyway, Collins here, Twins to win the division, plus a 150. That's from Collins Brown. All right, Collins, let's, uh, we got our four-pack game. Why don't you give them a recap of the plays here uh, for today's for uh, Thursday's action? Yeah, so we started off with Braves, Na Braves National, yes run first inning, plus 100, and uh, Braves to score in the first inning at plus 185. Uh, we, we took the Orioles to win in this uh, divisional matchup on opening day at plus 105. We took the Phillies against DeGrom to go ahead and win this one in nine at plus 115. And then just a little just a little flavor to add something to the – just to add a little uh, – some extra to the pot, we went ahead and took the Twins to win the division at plus 150. All four of these plays I like a lot, but, man, it's hard not to look at that Twins to win the division and just smile a little bit because you got it at plus – Plus money. Yeah, you knew they had the lineup last year. You just saw that, right? They got the hitting, and if the pitching just couldn't come through for them, but they, they addressed that. Twins to win the division, plus 150. All right, uh, Collins, we'll put up a record here. So, great results here in the NBA as we're just starting a brand new season, Major League Baseball. What are we going to have over at Tony'sPicks.com here as we open up baseball here on Thursday? A couple NBA as well. I'm going to try and keep myself calm. I'm just going to tell it to you like that because. Lord knows me, I'm going to throw out 15 plays tomorrow, and I'm just going to be willing to ride ride or die on every last one of them. So I'm going to try and keep myself down and try and play it even keel and actually try and pick my spots and select a few, but I'm chomping at the bit. I can't lie. I mean, I am chomping at the bit to get ready to get, for this baseball season. I've been prepping for like a month. I love it. I love this time of year. Yeah, excellent time of year there, guys. So get on board with Collins Brown. You see the great results there here in the NBA and get on board with Collins over at Tony'sPicks.com. Just click the link in the description. Click the All Cappers tab and you'll land right on Collins' page when you see him amongst the handicappers. You'll scroll down and you'll see all his pick offerings here. He'll be ready to rock and roll here for Thursday's action here at Major League Baseball season opener here. Uh, openers for all teams to, on, Thurs on Thursday as well as NBA in action. Of course, head into the Final four uh, on Saturday evening in IT finals here on Thursday as well. So go ahead and get signed up with Collins Brown. Remember that promo code at checkout, <coughs> Tony T at checkout, and that will save you 20% off all pre and pick packages. You can access Collins' page. Click the link in the description. Click the All uh, Cappers tab. Go ahead and get signed up. All right, Collins, it's always great having you on the show. Continue that success, and we'll catch up with you very soon. Yes, sir. I appreciate you very much. Got you as well. Collins Brown here on our show, guys. We'll talk soon.